the false empath. It follows that if there is a false empath, then there has to be a true empath. And as I have explained elsewhere, comprehensively and categorically, empaths do indeed exist. However, what causes problems with regard to people understanding the existence of the empath is the fact that so many false empaths exist. What is the false empath? Very simply, a narcissist. Not somebody who's narcissistic, not somebody who is normal. But the false empath is a narcissist. Not all narcissists are false empaths. Far from it. Not all narcissists behave in a way that is similar to that of the empath, nor think that they are empaths. Take the lesser narcissist to begin with. Unaware that they are narcissists, they have no emotional empathy, they don't exhibit any cognitive empathy either. They are the proverbial wrecking balls, doing things that will make them look good, that are effective for them, but generally dismissive of the views of anybody else. You don't like it? Fuck you. Don't agree with the way that I'm running my company? You're fired. It's my way or the highway. Aggressive, in your face. A spiked wrecking ball that smashes through life, always moving forward with devastation and debris following behind. These individuals don't think that they're empaths. Many of them couldn't even spell the word. They are unconcerned about the appearance of being good. They, particularly when it comes to upper lesser type B, may well pre present as being superior. They believe themselves better than people. Uh, that is their form of good. Well, the lower lesser doesn't go around thinking that he's a good person. He's just who he is and operates in the way that is effective for him. Ditto the middle lesser with some variations to cater for the bit of mid-range that's in him or her. Upper lesser type A don't think of themselves as bad people, but they don't necessarily think of themselves as good people either. They are entirely superficial, and they don't regard themselves as somebody that deliberately causes problems. They are just more meh about things. They give it a shrug. If you were to go to an upper lesser type A and say, for instance, my wife's just left me and be all upset, he'd go, great, let's go and see the strippers and get some blow. He's not the shoulder to cry on because he has no emotional empathy, but he doesn't even make a pretense of it because there is no cognitive empathy either. And whilst he doesn't think that he's evil or bad or horrible, he just does what he does. Hey, that's life, man. That's just the way I roll. Comments such as those. He doesn't think that he is a good or decent individual and doesn't go around pretending to be one either. So the lessers don't think that they are good people and certainly don't think that they are empaths. What about the greaters and the ultra? Well, of course, we know we're not empaths. And naturally, because of our lofty superiority, we look down upon the empath as seeing them as inferior to ourselves. And therefore, the last thing that we're going to do is go around claiming that we are one. Of course, similarly, we don't go around telling you that we are narcissists. Of course, I can tell you this through the auspices of this medium because you don't know who I am. But ordinarily, I would never sidle up to somebody and use my real name and confess, hey, guess what, I'm a narcissistic psychopath. That would be the step of an idiot. I'd be transferring power to them, and therefore I would not do that. The greater and the ultra know what they are. We know we're not empaths. We don't need to convey that to you. Of course, what we do is often considerable acts of good, as viewed from your perspective. We don't do this out of emotional empathy. It might be done out of cognitive empathy for the purposes of our facade and to enable us to fit in, and to enable us to get the prime aims, of course. But it's all done for ourselves. So take, for example, Steve Jobs, narcissist. He created devices on which you may well be listening to me now that are in many homes around the globe and was, and was part of the success story of Apple. Did he create that because he thought to himself, I'm a kind and wonderful man? No. 
He wanted to be the leader. He wanted to be different. He wanted to create something which not only made him look good and, of course, benefited other people, but it was him first. Take Elon Musk. The way that Tesla is putting electronic vehicles around the globe. SpaceX. Exciting frontiers, a pioneering individual, and a very wealthy one too. Of course, many of these things are benefiting humankind in some form, but they benefit him first. He won't make a pretense of being a good person. Indeed, some of his comments that he makes uh, demonstrate what he is. But he operates with that level of superiority that enables him to do good for people, but the driver is his own agenda. Take what I do for all of you. I don't do this out of the goodness of my heart. It's a black and an icy place. And yet, so many people go, Why are you doing this, don't you? I thought narcissists can't be helpful. Well, ask yourself this. The doctor that's performing life-saving surgery on you is likely to be a narcissist. You benefit from his desire to be the most skilled surgeon in the state and the country, driven by that rampant ego, his grandiosity, the need to assert control, and you benefit from it. You're not complaining about that, are you? That pitbull attorney representing you in proceedings, good chance is a narcissist. He does what he does. He may well believe that he does it because he wants the best for his clients, but as a narcissist... It is all about the prime aims. I do what I do with the creation of my legacy. It's about me, but you happen to benefit as well. So many narcissists actually do many things which would be considered as good, helpful, constructive, useful. All around the world, even though, of course, there is always a downside to our behaviours for some people. For many people who have an arm's length relationship with the narcissist, there isn't a problem. You benefit from, for example, the brilliant film that the narcissist created. You can go and watch that. And you may know that the director is an odious piece of excrement towards his wife and the people that he has to work with and actors complain about his behaviour, etc. But you don't have to deal with that. You can just enjoy the film. And therefore, his creation, which is created for his benefit, also benefits you with no actual downside for you. And therefore... The greater narcissist and the ultra, we do things which benefit us and, on a wide scale, many others. But we don't do it from the position of believing ourselves to be empaths. So, when it comes to the lessers and the greater than the ultra, we do not see ourselves as empaths for different reasons. And we don't behave like them either. The lessers just get on with things, cruising through life as the wrecking ball, as I've explained, and the greaters and the ultra do so from a position of superiority, a position of excellence and greatness. Not by holding themselves out as being great do-gooders. The false empath resides, as you might have expected, within the mid-range spectrum of narcissists. Lower mid-range, middle-middle range type A, middle middle range type B, and upper mid range. These are often some of the hardest narcissists to spot because they operate facades of helpfulness, facades of being a good person. You'll find them in the church. You'll find them in the community. You'll find them in charities. The family man, who of course behind the closed door, is devaluing his wife in an unpleasant way, but to the outside world is Mr. Reliable, Mr. Steady, a good man at work to be counted on a lay preacher at his local church, always available when it comes to some kind of charity work that needs to be done. The mid-range narcissists, as you know, I despise for their cowardice and their passive-aggressive ways. But before I embark upon any rant against them, and if you'd like to hear them in detail, do access the H.G. Mall series in the Knowledge Vault. It is the mid-rangers who are the false empaths, the ones that cause people to question whether empaths actually exist. The lower mid-range narcissist is an amalgam of lesser and mid-range. They're passive-aggressive, but they also have an aggressive streak to them when their intermittent facade flicks off. Imagine them to be like a strip light that's guttering, going flicker, flicker, flicker. That is the way that their facade operates, 
Sometimes it's on, sometimes it's off. And so other people get to see the dark side of the behavior of that particular narcissist. However, they actually still think that they're good people. They think that they're decent. They will think that they are empathic and that their aggressive responses are entirely justified as a consequence of the behavior of the narcissist, who, of course, is actually the true victim. Lower mid-rangers are false empaths because they present as being a good person because they utilize a facade and they're passive-aggressive so that they will use pity plays and complain and they'll use silent treatments. But there is also an aggression with them. And these are the ones which commonly shout about being I'm a super empath and I'm a supernova, even though you can't be in an event. The supernova is an event, not a, not a type of empath. They talk about how I kick the narcissist's butt and I manipulated him into the ground and I set his life on fire, etc., etc., and go on about it, venting it. As I have explained elsewhere, empaths go about their work quietly in an unassuming manner. Yes, there is the empathic supernova. Yes, there is the cliff fight back, which I've explained in other videos. But the aggression of the lower mid-range narcissist is apparent at a much earlier juncture. They have to shout and scream and, and wave their fists to try and demonstrate that they are this thing they believe that they are. And they truly believe it because they are an unaware narcissist. They do not stand there and think, I know I'm not one, but I'll pretend to be one. That doesn't happen. They honestly think that they are. And they usually manifest with this aggressive um, outpouring of how effective they are in taking the narcissist down. Of course, failing to realize that if they were an empath, they wouldn't behave in that way, save as a consequence of very high emotional thinking. And when that recedes, they wouldn't feel that way. The lower mid-range narcissist, of course, doesn't lower the emotional thinking because they don't suffer from it in the way the empath does. They may think that they do, but they don't. And so what you see is the behaviour is repeated again and again and again. And if you were to point out that their behaviour doesn't accord with that of an empathic person, that their behaviour doesn't accord with that of the empathic supernova, that they aren't a, aren't a super empath, be prepared for a dismissive, arrogant, uh, aggressive base response from them. They believe that they're empaths and they believe that they're almost some kind of like warrior empath, that they are there, that it is their mission to take down the narcissist. And as I have explained extensively in separate material, such a step is not, is not appropriate. You take down the narcissist through no contact. We're not invincible. Those of you that think that I portray our kind as invincible are not listening properly and you're not understanding what I'm telling you. We are not because no contact causes us significant problems, although certain narcissists are better equipped to deal with it than others. But that is a separate issue. When it comes to the lower mid-range narcissist, they believe that they are empaths, some kind of kick-ass, super-duper, take-down-the-narcissist style of empath. And they're not. They're contravening no contact if they were an empath, and they won't listen. And it isn't a one-off or infrequent event. It happens habitually, which demonstrates what they are. What about the middle, middle range A and middle, middle range B? Well, they are, as the name suggests, middle of the road narcissists. And they are either the overwhelming angel, anodyne, or the crybaby. There's two types of middle, middle range A, one of middle, middle range B. What they have in common is this. They very much think that they are good people. They can exhibit aggression occasionally, but more usually, these are the individuals who have a huge victim mentality. I was only trying to help. I don't know why he keeps picking on me. I was only trying to help with the grandchildren, and then she got all stroppy with me. They complain. They whine. They moan about their situation. It's always everybody else's fault. I was just trying to help, and look how I've been treated. Well, I only offered because I thought it would help you. If you don't want to come to our house for Christmas, then so be it. And then you get the sulk. These individuals don't display the aggression anywhere near to the level the lower mid-ranger does. Instead, these individuals truly believe that they are good people, 
and often behave in a holier-than-thou approach. They preach at people, tell them how to live their lives, admonish them for the mistakes that they make, hold themselves out of paragons of virtue. They will utilise false humility. There will be false compassion, false contrition. And of course, although it may take a while to detect, you can see the disconnect between what they say and what they do. The hypocrisies appear. The maintenance of the facade. The dark nature will appear in certain instances when the curtain is lifted. But again, these are individuals who are false empaths. They really believe that they are good people. They are over the top in their belief of their goodness. Different to the sort of warrior-like mentality of the lower mid-range, they often believe that somehow they have healed and fixed the narcissist, that they were able to do what nobody else can actually do, such as their grandiosity. They exhibit this huge victim mentality where they are always hard done to, and they are endless whiners and whingers. They believe that they only are trying to help people be decent, do the right thing, and they can't see that they transgress boundaries by interfering in people's lives, telling them what they should do, making decisions on behalf of people, signing people up for things when they didn't want to, taking things on the basis of, I know what's best for you. Again, these are the false empaths. What about then the upper mid-range narcissists? Well, they... Similarly, will have passive aggressiveness because they are mid-range, but they also have a haughty aggression based upon their perception of superiority, which is either sometimes based on something, because often upper mid-rangers can be extremely successful, extremely intelligent, or it's an embellished exaggeration of what's already there. What tends to happen with these false empaths is that they make grandiose gestures, and they're dismissive of people, but believe that they're entitled to do that on the basis of their good works. They don't see anything wrong in putting somebody down because I donate X thousand to such foundation and therefore my view should be taken into account. Oh, don't listen to them. They don't give anywhere near as much money as what I do. They breeze around, thinking themselves to be magnet empaths, thinking that the charisma, and they will have some, that they exhibit is born out of their empathic nature, and it isn't. It is a device that is being used to control people. If you point out that their treatment of somebody was somewhat high-handed or arrogant, they won't accept it, and there will be no apology. Basically, they are the little people, and I am above them. They will do what, what are perceived as good works, significant charitable donations, perhaps offering their time in a visible way towards helping people. That, of course, it's all part of facade management and the gathering of fuel and the assertion of control. And these individuals are false empaths. Not so much in the I have come to soothe your fevered brow way of the middle middle range A, and not so much in the aggressive way as the low mid ranger of being the one that's always kicking the narcissist's ass, but more in terms of I left the narcissist in the dust, I completely moved on after uh, outwitting them, and they exhibit behaviours whereby they believe that they are superior to everybody else and that what they do is vastly important and that allows them to get away with transgressions. They fail to see, of course, blinded by their narcissism, that this behaviour is inappropriate. Spotting these false empaths, of course, can prove difficult for you. And that is why the narc detector exists, so that you are able to put these people through where you've got a suspicion. But the more that you listen to my work, the more capable you will become of at least seeing the indicators which you can then utilise through my added expertise to fine-tune it and get to the result. Be under no illusion, there are many false empaths. Occasionally we see some in the comments on this channel. I have seen them appear on my blog. Sometimes they email me as well. The bulk of people, however, that do seek assistance and want information are empathic individuals who've been ensnared by narcissists and genuinely need the help. But there are a proportion that are false empaths. And 
Although spotting them can be difficult, over time you will become more attuned to doing so. And as I mentioned, my expertise is available to you to enable you to have your suspicions confirmed about such individuals. It is these false empaths which cause people perhaps to believe that empaths don't exist, but of course they do. It is these false empaths that cause the problems, and of course trying to point out to them that they are not an empath is doomed to failure. They are narcissists, and therefore their narcissism will blind them to what they really are, they can't help but believe that they are decent, that they did really kick the ass of the other person and that that was the right thing to do, or that they are truly a good person and therefore the rejection of their offer of help was mean and unkind and unfair. They don't realise that it was intrusive, unnecessary and interfering. These are the false empaths. Be wary of them. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.